Salamander saw the raven Mazrak again the very next morning. A little while past sunrise, his regular time to spy on Zack Growl, he focused through a scatter of high clouds and scried for Rocker. He saw her immediately, standing before the altar in the outer shrine. For a moment, he gloated over her image. Had she taken care of herself, she would have been beautiful, with her high cheekbones and thick dark hair. But her face looked sunburned and dirt-streaked, framed in messy tendrils of dirty hair. She was wearing a long sleeveless dress of pale buckskin, painted with Alshandra's holy symbol of the bow and arrow. Behind her, on the rough stone surface of the altar, sat the relics of her goddess's legendary worshipper, the holy witness, Raina. Salamander had seen most of them before. The box with the wyvern dagger, the copper tray with the miniature bow and arrows, the bone whistle and the obsidian pyramid. A new addition to the hoard startled him. They'd sewn the shirt he'd left behind onto a plain cloth banner and attached it to a long spear. It stood behind the altar and snapped in the wind. Lacanza, the grey-haired high priestess, stood next to Rocker with a scroll in one hand. In front of them, Sidro knelt with her head bowed, while the two horsekin holy women stood off to one side, their faces grim, their hands clenched into fists. As Salamander watched, Lacanza unrolled a few inches of the scroll and studied it for a moment. Sidro raised her head and looked at Rocker with such venomous hatred in her blue eyes that Rocker took an involuntary step back. But when Lacanza lowered the scroll, Sidro ducked her head to stare at the ground. Although Salamander could hear nothing, he could see Lacanza's mouth moving in some sort of chant. She raised a hand and beckoned to one of the horsekin priestesses. The woman stepped forward and took the wyvern dagger out of its box. She grabbed Sidro's long raven-black hair with one hand and raised the dagger with the other. Salamander yelped aloud, thinking he was about to see Sidro's throat slit. Instead, the woman pulled Sidro's hair taut and used the dagger to hack it off, cropping it close to her skull. Sidro endured the ritual with her mouth tight set and her eyes shut. Disgraced, Salamander thought. Serves her right too, nearly getting me killed like that. Yet what had she done, after all, but tell the truth and identify an enemy of her people? Salamander's conscience bit him hard. No one would listen to her now, but she had guessed the truth. He was one of Vandar's spawn, just as she'd said. His supposedly miraculous escape might well bring disaster upon the fortress and shrine both.